Hello, I'm Abia X Toy Cat, and today I'll share with you all the secrets of 21 biomes in Minecraft. Obviously, secret means something different to everyone who hears it, and so for the purpose of this video, it means any behavior of the biome that is not obvious to an end observer. Everyone can look around a cherry grove and see that there are pink trees here and pigs that spawn. However, it's less obvious that you'll find uh, the emerald ore and silverfish hidden just below it. And so, in the same way, today's video will share with you biomes from A to Z alphabetically, from the caves to the warm from the end barrens to the rainforest and explain to exactly why it is that the note block is more valuable here in the cherry grove as well as the real truth behind the mushroom island and the block that seems non-renewable unless you happen to know the right biome to use bone in. That's all going to be covered today starting with the bamboo forest. A biome which is called that because... Well, anyway, the important thing about this biome is it's got some of the best early game access to wood, three different types of wood you'll find here, as well as multiple types of food. All of the animals that spawn here, as well as the coca beans, as well as the melons, make this the early game paradise. And obviously, it is also one of the hot biomes. Most people have a vague conception of how temperature works in Minecraft, but hot biomes tend to spawn together. And in case you know about heat, you probably don't know about humidity, which is a real concept in Minecraft. As little sense as it makes, because rain is either on or off for your entire world, the humidity in the biome actually means that different biomes are more or less likely to spawn around it too, and this means that bamboo jungles are almost certain to spawn with a lush cave below them. And so, let's test that. Here is bamboo jungle number one, and as expected, just below it, you can find a lush cave, but could be a coincidence, right? Bamboo jungle number two, has nothing underneath it for you. Although interestingly, it has both the dripstone caves and the deep dark below it, so almost exactly the opposite of true. Bamboo jungle number three will fill you with glee if you're specifically looking for the lush cave. Bamboo jungle number four gives us even more with a particularly large one below this. And bamboo jungle number five keeps the theory alive because look at that, there's a lush cave below this one too, meaning 80% of the bamboo jungles that we tested do in fact have lush caves below them, something which is almost as valuable of a signal as actually finding an azalea tree, which gives you another great reason to use this biome in the early game. The cherry grove biome is well known as the place to go if you want pink leaves, pink logs, or pink dye in ridiculous quantities, but also you might have seen in the intro that I had a fun demonstration of how much emerald is found below. We replaced all of the stone here with air just to show that if you are doing some early game caving, consider doing it below a cherry grove. However, there is one risk you should be careful of, or maybe a benefit, depending on how you see silverfish. Personally, I think they're one of the more annoying mobs. However, if you start looking around, you might find some silverfish stone. How am I going to look for silverfish stone? Well, when you break it with your fist, it will start to break a lot faster. This is one of the things to be careful of if you don't like silverfish and their big horde attack. Uh, the other way that you can spot if there is silverfish stone, and I think this one is a lot more ridiculous, is using a note block. The note block obviously makes a sound based on the block below it, and the sound it makes for stone is different than the sound it makes for infested stone. This is a ridiculous fact about note blocks, but it's one I absolutely love, and uh, for most people, you might just be happier knowing that silk touch will mean that you'll never have to encounter the uh, infested stone because it will immediately convert into regular stone, and so either do mine with a silk touch to avoid silverfish for all, forever, or specifically don't mine with a silk touch pickaxe if you love silverfish and want to see them all the time, uh, in which case I'm going to judge you a little bit as a person. Uh, speaking of something I'm going to judge you as a person for, obviously on YouTube, everyone says that you should subscribe to their channel, and I think that uh, th this is something that is in a lot of people's self-interest. However, if you are liking these Minecraft videos and you want to see more of them, consider subscribing to the channel so that you can stay up to date with the latest and weirdest things happening in Minecraft, like with the Dark Forest, for example. A lot of people know this roof forest as being the place where you can find dark oak, but did you know you can also find oak and birch here, which means just between this one biome and the bamboo jungle, you can find two-thirds of the wood types in the game. You don't even be missing the cherry and then the neverwoods. Anyway, the other interesting fact about the dark forest as many people know this as being very terrifying because it's one of the few places in the overworld where hostile mobs can spawn in the day because of the darkness however this actually makes it seem like it's one of the most dangerous biomes when in reality it's one of the safest all you need to do to prove this is get your hands on a horse and then jump on top of a tree as we'll do right here and you can realize that this is the easiest biome in the game to bypass if you don't want to be down there with the dark oak and honestly who does you can walk over this thing from a top and get a bird's eye view of the entire thing 
making it one of the fastest biomes besides the plains or the desert to cross through. And so dark forests are good news for wood collectors and for people who'd rather not. Also, for many people who don't know, you can find large mushrooms here, although what they're doing here, I guess, is a big question uh, that I'll leave up to you. Just like how you should probably know how the Lush Caves was created, weirdly enough, one of the Minecraft artists behind it said that it was inspired by the painting. Oh, that was the full size of the Lush Cave. The Lush Cave was inspired by Us Goldrum's Vandering, was what I was saying. A painting which I have tracked down and looks like this, by the way, although I don't own the rights to share it, so let's quickly get it away and say very quickly that the Lush Cave can be an incredibly large biome, or it can be incredibly small, but in either case, most people would know that the Lush Cave has to be in a cave, right? But this is actually not true. As proven by this seed right here, which is incredible and has a Lush Cave entirely exposed to the air, not really making it much of a cave. Really, this is the Lush Biome, if we're being honest, and in case you think this is just some random one-off seed example, this seed was actually found by the Minecraft developer responsible for the new terrain generation, Henrik Nieberg, and so, fun fact, this is an intended feature that lush caves can spawn out in the open if you really want to, making it one of the most fun biomes, as well as one of the best places to look for ores of any type, because despite the biome mostly being made up off the moss and clay blocks, which look very distinctly not like ores, ores will still generate here as if they were surrounded by stone, leaving you with some very easy pockets of gold, iron, or anything else that you can come through and mine. Fun fact, right? Next up, we have the meadow, which is notable to me for the fact that when you bone mill the ground, you'll find that you'll get a random variation of grass and flowers, and then you can bone mill the ground again, and you'll get a different random variation, or so it seems, but actually every spot that you can place on is actually predetermined, meaning then every single meadow biome, you'll get something like this if you bone mill the ground enough, something which is mind-blowing if you ask me. Speaking of mind-blowing, this biome is really good in a way that most people don't appreciate, because most hostile, most uh, friendly mobs do not spawn here, and so that leaves you with just three of them, the rabbit, the sheep, and the donkey. All three of these mobs are the weird ones that you need in odd situations, and if you haven't seen a baby donkey before, it's adorable. You gotta come here specifically for that, but even if you haven't, getting your hands on some of the rarest but most interesting and sometimes valuable mobs in Minecraft is a reason enough to come here, and just in case that's not true, did you know if a tree spawns in the meadow, it is guaranteed to have a beehive? And even if you were to plant one yourself, because there are so many flowers here, if you plant one within two blocks of a flower, you have a chance of getting a beehive yourself. Somewhere you won't be finding any beehives though is the mega tiger biome, which is a great source of mossy cobblestone if you ever need to find it, as well as the fox and the wolf if you need some friends. However, something you might not have known is this biome also has a high humidity value, making it a great place to find lush caves below, and also trail ruins can be found here. It is very rare, but this is a great place to look if you want to do some archaeology, which I definitely don't want to do right now. The Mesa Biome is the only place in the entire game where you'll find more gold than the Nether, and also the only place where abandoned mine shafts are both exposed to the public and very much visible, and also made out of dark oak instead of regular oak. And the only reason as to why that's true is because they started on the Pocket Edition and later the Bedrock version, and then figured, yeah, I guess this makes sense to port over to the Java version. Speaking of porting to Java, this is also true for a lot of the game's mountain biome features. By the way, you'll recognize almost all of these for having a high number of iron, coal, and emerald doors, and also for being able to spawn with deep darks below them. In case you're curious as to why this is true, it's actually a deeper dark down there if you think about it. I mean, obviously I have an exposed lush cave here, this is surprisingly common, uh, but if you think about the game as being relative to bedrock, why minus 51 is always in the same place, but if you think about it as relative to the height of the world generation above, we're actually a hundred blocks higher up right now, which means there's a hundred blocks more cave we have to go through to get to the deep dark, meaning that you can go deeper and you can can get darker, apparently. Speaking of dark, I'm really excited because I found a mushroom island where I know it will be safe after dark. The most famous fact about this biome is that you can never find hostile mobs here, but did you know there are lots of caveats on that which you might not have known about? These situations include not sleeping for three days in a row because phantoms will still spawn here. These situations include monster spawners if they are found below the surface. If it is dark enough, they will still choose to spawn in some skeletons or other mobs if they so choose to, and then also these situations include if you have a pillager raid, also if a skeleton trap chooses to spawn, you can get skeleton horses and their skeleton riders, and the most interesting one of all of these, in my opinion, has to be the wandering trader, because he will spawn in llamas, and if you fight them, 
uh, they will choose to get mad with you right back, which is not very nice unless you're trying to distract a phantom, maybe? Anyway, those are five situations where you can have hostile mobs spawning inside of a mushroom biome, so watch out, I guess. Also, the sixth situation is if there is a cave biome below, that biome will overwrite the rules of this one above it, meaning that you won't find all of the things you're looking for. The mushroom fields also has this beautiful green grass color that you won't often see because of the mycelium, but if you bring some grass from outside and slowly convert the biome over, you'll get some grass on the quality of a jungle or a shattered savanna. Rest in peace. The Snowy Plains biome is one of Minecraft's most beautiful, but if you ever want to replace the snowy part of it and just use the plains, all you need to do is place down a bucket of water and watch as it slowly replaces all of the snow with the ugly green grass below, but that might be something you want. Something you might also want is to know that the Snowy Plains and every other snowy variant biome are effectively the same. Even the ice spikes is just a version of this, except it won't spawn with villagers, trees, igloos, grass, or any of the other types, and maybe that's interesting to you. In the same way a bamboo jungle is just a jungle variant, so too is the Ice Spikes a Snowy Plains variant. Although, to be honest with you, I've never been a fan of arguments that say, if you just ignore all of the differences, it's basically the same, because, you know, you could argue all humans are the same, besides the ways in which we're different, just like how you definitely couldn't argue the swamp is the same as any other biome. This place is so unique in so many ways, from the vines on the trees to the water, that you literally can't see anything in. This is a very unique place, and you might like the beautiful light blue flowers that you're fine when you bone mill the ground. You also might like that this is the one consistent above ground place that you can find slimes. The closer the moon is to a full moon, the more you'll find slimes here. But either way, it's the only place for that. And also, because fossils generate here, you'll find more diamonds in the swamp biome than anywhere else in the game, because some fossils generate with diamonds in. Also, on bedrock, you'll find huge mushrooms here, something that might be jarring to a Java player. And finally, it's worth mentioning uh, that if you want to find some villagers, you're not meant to be able to find a swamp village, but you better believe they'll sometimes generate partially in here anyway, and so fun fact, the swamp is filled with unique adventures. There's probably some off-color joke we can make about settling on lands that aren't really theirs and where the people look entirely different, however, instead of doing that, instead we'll move on to the taiga, which conveniently is right behind me. Uh, did you know that the taiga biome, when it exceeds Y160, actually ends up having snow on there because all rain will be immediately converted to snow above a certain and height level in cold biomes. This is something you might have known, but you might not have known what it does to foxes. Oh, look how cute he is. The snowy fox is by far the best fox. Speaking of cute, that's exactly what I think it is when people say they want to spend more time in the ocean. You know the place of the sharks and which is literally made for animals with fins and ways to swim, whereas we have legs and arms that tire very quickly. But the interesting thing about warm oceans in Minecraft is they're a great place to go to find coral. These are some of the most vibrant rocks blocks that you can get and people love to come here specifically for them. However, they are basically non-renewable. There is technically the wandering trader exception. However, getting your hands on lots of coral can be hard and so for most people, the coral, and indeed the coral fans, are something that slowly go extinct as your world gets older and you start to lose them to uh, them slowly decaying and dying like this. However, something fun you might not know is if you go to the ocean floor and bone meal it, you can actually grow your own coral from scratch. This means that over and over again, if you really choose to, you can actually get yourself large amounts off these coral fans and you can make ridiculous numbers off them with very little work because coral is very easily farmable, just like my health, which I should probably start working on right now. That has been every single overworld biome with some weird behavior that you probably didn't know about. And uh, yeah, I, I really was tempted to include every single biome on this list, but uh, you very quickly you start to realize that for stuff like the lukewarm ocean, you're going to be making up facts that aren't really relevant. So to keep things as tight as possible, we will be moving on now to the never and end, but I won't be uh, keeping you up with minutes per section. And instead, I can speed run this. So there's an incredible fact that I read on the Minecraft wiki about all of the nether biomes that's absolutely going to blow your mind when you get to it. However, there are five biomes here and real quick, this is the Crimson Forest. Did you know the Crimson Forest will never border the Basalt Delta and so instead you're much more likely to find it bordering the Warp Forest. These two biomes are very interesting because according to Minecraft themselves, so this is official Minecraft lore, the ancient debris that's found in the nether slowly pollutes the place and the only thing that brings it 
back to life are the giant fungi found here. These are in the nether specifically to counteract the giant amounts of pollution that ancient debris and the scrap metal in it causes. Very interesting fact to me at least. Also an interesting fact is that you will not find one of these piglin bastions in a basalt delta. This is because all of the new nether biomes tend to have their blocks overwrite structures and so you get some very strange nether fortresses. However, because the bastion is made from lots of basalt blocks and the basalt delta tends to overwrite structures it comes into contact with, it would look very, very messy. And so, uh, yeah, this is deemed as an acceptable collision of biome and structure, but the basalt delta is not, which means you'll never find one of the most fun structures to deal with, or maybe most terrifying, in the most terrifying biome, which, as I see it, is a good thing. The nether waste biome is much older than all of the other biomes in the nether, and is also the best place to mine, because unlike the lush caves, the ore blocks here will not overwrite the surface blocks in any other biome, meaning if you want to get your hands on a lot of these, this is the easiest, but also the most common place to find them. Uh, the Soul Sand Valley is, of course, next, and I did a lot of digging into this, and I've decided to go into what most people think are the best things about the Soul Sand Valley. I prepared a list of absolutely everything that people care about, and so... Yep, that's about it, I think. You can find mushrooms here, and you could bone mill those mushrooms, but they'll never grow into giant mushrooms. Is that interesting? If you choose to kill yourself, you'll end up in a better place than the Soul Sand Valley. Technically also a fun fact. Okay, the fun fact that applies to all of the nether biomes also applies to the end, where fun fact, there are more biomes on Java than on Bedrock, so for today, we'll be talking about the singular, the end biome, which is a great place to find food if you're not where the dragon has to be, and also is a very interesting place in terms of the physics. So right now I have fire resistance on, look at the way the world looks through the lava, isn't this absolutely fascinating? But also, when it comes to water, there is the most interesting color you'll find here, it's this weird purple that is absolutely beautiful beautiful in so many ways. I would specifically build in the end if I had a water build because this is my personal favorite color. And so now that you've got, dealt with the fun water physics that you might not have expected here, I think you're ready to hear about the Minecraft Wiki's most fun fact about never and end biomes. This one did blow my mind when I first read it, so make sure you're in a chair. Most biomes in the overworld are based on real life counterparts. Dark forests or swamps parallel real life biomes, except for the addition of giant mushrooms, which don't exist in reality. Whoa, that's interesting. Biomes in the never and the end don't exist either. Whoa! My whole life has been a lie. In the real world, what happens when you get the ender pearls and the blaze rods together is you don't end up with an end portal that takes you over here. Why have I been collecting these things then? Anyway, the, the point here is to say that uh, this is the fun facts about the never and the end, but the video's not over. Custom biomes might seem like something from a mod, and they often are, but if you want to do this in a vanilla Minecraft, take advantage of the fact that these biomes I've shown in this video are hard-coded into your world. No matter how much you change the blocks and the characteristics of what you think the biome are, the biome is hard-coded into the game, and this means that no matter how beautiful you love your grass, warm ocean, where you're gonna be building a house and pretending that it's never been uh, water here anyway, uh, Truthfully, if you ever go underneath some water and you do decide to place some sand down there and then you decide to bone mill that sand, this is a bad example, then you decide to bone mill that sand, do you know what's going to happen? You're going to find yourself some seagrass and then eventually you're going to find yourself some coral growing there as well because this is the fun truth of everything in this video. Knowing these facts about how the biomes work is something that you can then use by altering it on top of it and I think there's a lot of fun examples. You can use this even to make old biomes. So if you've ever been curious like what happened before the current set of biomes and I, I, I would love to believe that terrain looked like this but truthfully Minecraft biomes used to be a lot smaller back in the day and some people used to like this myself included but ultimately it meant the world felt much less diverse because you'd find the same five biomes over and over again but if you're curious and you want to make those old biomes or you want to make your world look like it then here are some of those old biomes now. This rainforest is the precursor to the jungle and very strong emphasis on precursor. The only thing that made it a fun big forest is is that more of the trees here were large. This is the seasonal forest. <laughs> I mean, seriously, look at the character that some of these biomes used to have. The swamp land, this is what swamps looked like before 1.8. I remember the revolution, uh, you know, when beta 1.8 came out and swamps looked like swamps and not <laughs> whatever this is meant to be. This is the savannah biome. It's just a, a plains biome, but with this uh, yellow ugly grass that you'll find sometimes. This is the shrubland, one of Minecraft's smallest biomes. It was often smaller than a single chunk. This is the tiger biome. 
this is the old desert, and this is the plains and the tundra, and this is the sky dimension, which was uh, definitely a dimension you could access and not a fun concept that was later rolled into the end. But speaking of fun concepts that are rolled into the end, this is the very edge of the video. It's where we get one last pitch to say thank you for watching, check out ibxtoycat.store, and get, if, if there's anyone in your life that you'd like to treat to an extra special Valentine's Day card or big salmon energy uh, t-shirt or hoodie, then you can find it at ibxtoycat.store. Because if there's anyone you'd like to treat to a Today is Monday t-shirt for when it feels like Monday, as we all know that is every single day, uh, you can get a premium t-shirt over at ibxtoycat.store or Big Salmon Energy, also available as a hoodie. And indeed, my favorite product, this is for those of you out there that have someone in your life that you're, you've got feelings about, but you're not quite sure how to express them. You don't want to come on too strong. Well, I've got myself, I've got you the beautiful card to send, which is, hey babe, I think you're at least in the top 60% of women as rated by appearance. It is one that is sure to make people go, oh, he doesn't find me ugly and repulsing. And uh, indeed, if there's someone who is more special than that, remind them that we'll all die someday and you'll die together with them with this lovely pair of mugs that fit together perfectly like you and your significant other. Or indeed, like Minecraft and the rainforest biome before 1.8. But either way, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Hope you found it interesting because I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.